So I've been getting a plethora, just a, a constant wave of uh, emails, comments, um, just asking to do a developer commentary on Welcome to the Family mm. with uh, you, you and me, uh, a la uh, Portal 2 developer commentary. Portal 1, I think, also has a developer commentary. And we're going to do it here. Uh, and we're going to do it here. A Welcome to the Family. Now, let's just start off... Um, I'm Anonymous Disco. Your name's missing. We just spooky looky. We're bros. Yeah, we just share the profile on Dreams now, pretty much for creation. Yeah, and it's just too much of a hassle to do all this collab. Share just shit. to have your name on there. Chances are we fuck something up, and none of this will get released. So, well, we did. Well, do you want to tell the horror story? What happened? Well, I mean, it's not really so much of a horror story with this, and it's happened. I think with every dream I've created, but there's always comes down to some sort of like element that won't fucking transfer over because we've saved it incorrectly or something. Mm -hmm. So even with this, there are absent pieces and stuff, and, and we'll, like we had to do so much tinkering with. We'll go into it. Um, what we had to cut ended up inevitably cutting from this because there was actually a whole other level that was supposed to be in it. It will be in the next game. We'll put it into something else. But yeah, unfortunately, we had to cut a whole level from this just because, like, yeah, like Luke said, some Sometimes stupid is a bullshit. It's a bitch. So here's, yeah, a funky little tune saying, Welcome to the family. Name of the game. We can see that you're in a little car outside this building. Here we go. I'm gonna start her up. You've crashed your car into a fallen tree. You won't be traveling anymore tonight. Despite being far outside the city, a tall office building can be seen in the distance. Perhaps you can find help there. So you actually just sit and wait in the car. Time passes, yet not a soul is out in this storm. I think this will just take you in a loop. Yeah. Um, you just sit in the car. So you have to head to the building. Shut up your vehicle and make your way to the building. Leave. Let's leave. Odd. It's open. It seems abandoned. So, I'm not sure. No, this isn't. This is the second level I made. And it's much different than the way I made it. Because essentially, if you want to kind of know a little bit about how the sauce is just made... Um, at least with Welcome to the Family, is I think I kind of designed all, like, the levels and then I kind of passed it to you and you kind of and pretty them up and, and linked uh, them together. them all together. Yeah. Because this started as I, uh, the text-based adventure we wanted to try and make and then we had these levels, so we kind of wove them together into the, into the story. So mm. it'll go back and forth between the, um between the text-based game and kind of like this this part of the game where you're free to walk around. And I guess technically um I guess technically the first thing that was made was the text-based adventure and I was all you. Um but it just didn't have a direction. It just didn't have a direction. It didn't have a home. Got this creepy guy standing in the corner. Got this creepy guy, he's unintelligible. Just to kind of set the mood that uh Kind of a uh, place you go insane. You go, you're not, not everything's not quite right here. Um, <clears throat> whoever designed this, we've put it in all our games too. It's it's actually a drawing. Well, that's the best thing about it because when you get into messing with like puppets and dreams, then you start fucking around more shit. Mm -hmm. Then like they could become alive and start moving around. But this guy's actually just painted, and you can kind of notice that he's just kind of a painting. You see the flex. Um, so, yeah, that's why he works really well, that we put him in all our... So, kudos to whoever made that. Um, it's a great little... It's just... It's just great little asset. It's there. just fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. All right, I think he'll comment. When was the last place this was green? Gross. Gross. And then you come over here. This guy. I've got the gargoyle. The gargoyle. So we really need to add a door on this bathroom. How are you, though? Fine, I guess. I'm sorry. I know I don't work here, but I really had to go. There ain't a bathroom for miles on this road. What is this place? How should I know? I just stopped in for a poop. <laughs> if I guess, it's an office. But hey, I'm no Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great read on that, man. Take care, mate. Take care. That's I think that's exactly how we sound. But um, I thought a lot about what these guys sound like. Yeah, yeah. 
Good get in the head. That's how you write it. Good care. Good, good <laughs> yeah, get in the head. We don't have any voice acting yet. Oh, mm-hmm. you know what? This is. I just noticed this. Does that door close after you talk to him? Yeah, you can't get in the bathroom after you leave. You're locked out. Oh, see, even on both sides here. I see. I didn't even notice that. That's the the environment slowly changes around you. The environment is slowly changing. So many choices. So many places to go. So many things. To what if we didn't talk to the gargoyle? What if we just decided <laughs> to go over here? <laughs> no, it's funny because I've like put these Santanko um, uh, cola machines everywhere. Like I didn't make the cola machine, but I put the the change the, the change the logo. Yeah. Because originally I had this idea for like this Santanko, and it's it, now it is just canon in the St. Mildred universe that there's this pop called Santanko. Yeah, this is what they drink. This is what they drink there. Um, this uh, I guess is loosely inspired. This this lobby is loosely inspired from where I work. That was kind of yeah, really the whole the whole jumping off point for you was you were starting to kind of notice the some of the cool areas at your work that were just hyper liminal. Yeah, super cool. liminal. So this is kind of like the lunch room where I work and I eat lunch. Um I think in one of these, yeah, this is I love this. You see this pop up in a lot of dreams. Yeah, it's just like you got to It's almost like um what's that scream that's in all those movies? Oh, the Wilhelm scream. Wilhelm scream. Yeah, it's like that for dreams. You got some washing machines. Which I, I just thought was fun. I just thought was fun. Um, but anyways, yeah. So the next place you gotta go to get out of here is uh, you gotta log in on this PC. So now we're kind of back into like the text-based computer thing. Mm-hmm. So we can see that it's O'Curtis. Your name that comes up in the Mildred University, you know, the company O'Curtis. We're gonna run this program. Learn and develop. And that's you, Luke, there, saying it's that. It's the only voice acting I've tried. It's, it's yeah. hard to do in dreams. Yeah, we have not like dabbled over, I don't know, it's, it's another hard thing. It'd be fun to do more of it, but, yeah, like I said, it's hard to do any, anything in dreams. You've crashed your car into an old tree. The car is smoking from the hood. You will need some serious repairs. The road continues left. A path to the forest on the right. So I guess our thinking here was is that, you know, it's starting to parallel... Um, what's happening in real life? Yeah, it's like didn't I, you know you were just doing this? Kind of looks like your car. You crashed your car. Mm-hmm. But now we're playing this game on this computer. Mm-hmm. It looks like that. What's so going what's what, going on? Which way do you want to go? Uh let's uh let's go to the forest. Let's see what's what's in the forest. Let's see what's in the forest. You come to the opening of the forest. And are shocked to see a shadowy figure staring back at you from the woods. You could run further into the woods, or try to communicate. What do you think? Let's talk to him. Let's talk to him. The shadow reveals itself to be a young boy. I didn't think I'd make it out alive. You gotta get out of here now. What happened? I went for a walk in the woods. I found a huge crater and fell in. I saw some terrible creature. Before I knew it, I was running out of the woods towards you. Creature. I can't explain it. I gotta get home. You come to a small house, just at the edge of the woods. It looks well kept, quite cozy, but empty. Knock. There is no answer. The door is slightly open from the force of your knock. Enter. Yeah, those are fun to make, like the text-based things. They're really cool. You can do a lot with those. Uh... What? How did I get here? So now we're in uh, the Alex's next area they made, which is uh, the sleep clinic. The sleep clinic. Now, this is something I yeah, I had to go do. I had to go do a sleep test. And um, they suck. They really suck. But I, again, just kind of like... While I was there, I was like, this place is just right out of the back rooms. Well, the fact that you're there overnight in this, like, hospital-like setting, it's, it's kind of creepy. Mm-hmm. So this, this bathroom is just a total troll, too. It's just like you just walk down this really long hallway. There's like a dirty bathroom there. Um, but, yeah, this is these are the sleep clinics. These are the sleeper rooms here. And I really like the, just the look of these and how these turned out. 
Oh, and I think uh, just yes, there's a little camera. So they're being monitored. Someone's watching. We're being watched. Which is just like, you know, legit. Like how they do it. Exactly, yeah. Sleep they gotta clinic. watch his sleep. There's some sick fucks, I'm sure, work at sleep clinics. They, like, just to get off on it. They just like watching you sleep. Do you remember there was, like, Craigslist ad? Well, I don't know if you remember it specifically. It was just, like, floating around the internet as, like, a creepy ad. But it was, like, this guy was just, like, willing to pay, like, $100 to watch you sleep. Ew. And, like, uh... A hundred dollars if he, if he would like could come into like the room and watch you sleep it would be like fifty if you could like stand out of your window and watch you sleep and then like it's like I'm a man who likes what it likes and like or something it's like no questions asked on either side or something it's like one of the creepiest like Craigslist vibes can't get in there I wonder if any people uh went for it. Probably not. It was probably a troll to begin with, but it's still <laughs> creepy nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, that, that is. That would be a funny prank. This is just a little bit of ambiance. The thinker. If you turn around quick enough. In the stinker. And the stinker is behind you. Um, this is just another one of my favorite rooms in the game. I really like this room. It's this little, like, kind of lava lamp party lounge. You got the TV with the PlayStation. PlayStation 1. one. PlayStation 1. Because it's PlayStation 1 graphics. See what we're doing there? See what you see what, see what's done? But if you turn around... <gasps> Mr. Nosy. Mr. Nosy's watching you. He's always watching you. He's, he's very nosy, if you will. This guy is great. We're coming here, right? And this is... Uh, Zeus. This is Zeus. We can talk to him. I guess we didn't really mention in the uh, gargoyle thing, but like these, how uh, they change the scene when you go to talk to the NPCs. I, re I really like it. Yeah, it reminds yeah. me of kind of an old DOS you game. You get like, or you something. like uh, a chat screen or something. Mm -hmm. Congratulations are in order. It seems you're an anomaly and haven't fallen to the pale. I'm curious. Dost thou wish to take your sleep test now? No way! I'm sorry, I ask as to be polite. The test is compulsory. Report to room four, and we'll begin. Hurry now. What is this test? I can't explain it, sorry. It's just, he's watching me. Can you go to room four now? Just go to bed, and I will do the rest. Creep show. Creep show. All right. Room four. We fall asleep and we find ourselves broken up in a hotel room. I'm getting paranoid. Did I hear a voice? Maybe the maid? No. It's 12.30 a.m. I didn't realize we made a mistake, though. What's that? We say it's 12.30 a.m., but it's clearly the middle of the day. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, we said all is not what it seems. Maybe it's not what it hey, seems. Hey, you know what? We're not perfect. We're not fucking perfect, man. We can't fucking make what we expect of us. This is a little reference to um, one of both Luke and I's favorite games. Uh, Deja Vu. Deja Vu. You don't recognize your own reflection. A stranger stares back at you. You rack your brain trying to remember who you are. Who are you? Who should we say? I'm Echo 7. You feel a small memory crawl back into your mind. You will call soon. But yeah, just like in Deja Vu, um, how you uh, look in the mirror at that one point and you... It's all freaky. It's all freaky and you don't... He doesn't recognize himself. He's like forgotten his memories. It's what we were trying to... Trying to capture that emotion. How's the room service? The burgers are good. Hey, kid. I got your entry pass already. You'll be welcome at the executive conference. There should be no hassle from security. 
Who is this? The sleeping giant. So we're laying the seeds. We're laying the seeds. Now, I mean, how much of the, the mystery do you want to get into on this tell-all? Well, yeah, like, I mean, like, you know, there's, there's obviously a bit of a story going on here. Uh, so we, we're starting to get the sleeping giant here. Echo 7. That was also came up again. So, you know, we also saw that we had the option to pick Jeremy there as well. So, you know, if you've played our other games, we've made mention of Jeremy before. He seems to be someone who's involved with O. Curtis. And uh, so it seems like we're getting a bit of a memory there, a bit of a flashback in our sleep test, something going down. Mm. And uh, someone named the Sleeping Giant is communicating with us. So we don't, we, you know, it's still very abstract at this point. We don't know what's going on necessarily. But we know the, the computer... We're getting some similar names are getting dropped here. The computer test is also paralleling reality. And I think another thing we... I don't know. Is we, we were trying to go for a little bit. Is that um, where the O'Curtis... Like where your car breaks down in real life and the O'Curtis building is. Is where the house would be that you entered on the text-based adventure as exactly. well. Exactly. So... It seems like it's trying to kind of tell us this story... Maybe the, you know, uh, the computer is telling us a bit about the past, something that happened before before the O'Curtis building was put here, you know? So what's going on? Maybe what's going on? So now we got the password, Echo 7. We can, boom, slap her in there. You enter a small house. The inside of the house is cold and bare. That you sense a presence about. An envelope is sitting on the table. I'm leaving to investigate the mysterious crater. Since it appeared, I cannot sleep. The house seems haunted. I will not stay here any longer. Not without some answers. So maybe that's a reference to the boy who went out looking that we ran into earlier. Mm. You turn to see a strange entity before you. His presence makes you uneasy. Your feet feel heavy. You can see a basement door in the floor behind you. I'm going to try to talk to it. Unable to translate. And then, uh, I'll deny. You have denied assimilation with the entity. Exercise complete. So it's also now we're just getting that it's just like, okay, well, this is some kind of, um, you know, work test thing. Like, they're they're testing you to see if you're a good candidate to work for the Okurtis group as well. Uh, yeah, it seems like we're kind of making our way through this, this office and... We we get to do these uh, we get to do these little uh, you know things on the computer that give us these more bits of the story. Mm, exactly. Now here's another one, just uh, a real life inspiration. Um, another thing I had to do at work was we went to this thing. It was this. We drove out to this golf um, country club for them to have this big meeting. Um, I don't remember what it was called now, like We Unite or something like that. And it's pretty much these two big like CEO guys came out and they like showed us this slideshow and gave us a bunch of free coffee and Danishes and we just sat there and listened to them talk about uh, projections and numbers and stuff. And it was really, really, really boring. And, um... <laughs> it was a day off work though so that was nice and um again i was just like it was just in this really uh room i guess that kind of looked like this a bit and um this was this was the this version this was the big table they had for us with all the danishes desserts. and desserts and coffees and it was just purely continental the breakfast yeah but you know, it was free. Same time, I be no, no, no. This is not the first room I made either. No, this this was early though. This was early. This was one of the earlier things too. Um, was he come up here and you could see Nosy. Again, if you turn around, there is somebody following you throughout here. You get the you get another little it's like something's out. You get the boom something's boom. Out. This is the thumbnail for the game. That's right. That hallway. Um. But yeah, I got this guy in the corner. We got this here. guy in the corner. What is it? Hypnos. Hypnos. Oh, they all have like, kind of like these Greek names. 
Yeah, that's like code right. names. So that's a little bit of our jump scare. I guess really the only kind of jump scare in there. It's as jumpy as it gets, yeah. It's as jumpy as it gets, yeah. But you must not trust the godless spider and the web of lies he weaves. You must push forth and free the titan for you to make you leave. What is going on? You're helping me? I am but a ghost from a time long gone. I have no power here, but you, but like you, I heard her song. How do I leave? Free the Titan, end this curse, or else you'll, or else you'll live a fate much worse. All right, so now we're in the room he came from. Here's another reference to the mall. The mall exe and. The mall uh, exe. You kind of just—it's that idea that oh, Curtis is just behind all this crazy shit that's going on in St. Mildred, and we're getting we're getting drip fed little little bits of info here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess you just kind of to sow the seed that oh, Curtis is uh, responsible for the mall and Mall Exe for that matter. You now the clock on the wall. I think the door to the the lobby is now closed, so we can't get back from there. So we have to press forward. We'll go down the hall. And I guess if we think about what like Hypnos is saying there, he's saying um, you have to... Uh, free this Titan. Free this Titan to be free. There's also the Whistler. We see Nosy again. So Nosy's definitely following you around. I guess kind of assuring that uh, you reach some kind of conclusion at some point. A little stairwell. And that's the thing with these stairs and fucking dreams. You really gotta get some momentum to get up them. Gotta give it a little gas. Gotta, gotta give, give it a little, it a little gas. gas. If you stop, you are gonna get stuck, baby. So keep... You push through. You push through that shit. Alright, so I guess we'll talk a little bit. There was actually supposed to be... This is where the original level was going to be. And we won't say too much because I think we're gonna use it in another game. But there was another level here. And... Um, Maybe would have made this a tad la- less abstract than yeah, it is. But the game's pretty abstract as is, so we didn't. We just so kind of continued so and like pushed forth. It. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can go up and talk to these eyeballs. Tell don't you, believe the house. Don't believe the house. She can't reach you from this room. She can't hear us. Do not lose focus. The giant lies. Don't believe the house. Stay on track. The giant lies. So we keep getting these, this sleeping giant and all that stuff. And some are telling us that it lies. Some are telling us that it tells the truth. Some tell us to destroy it. Some tell us to uh, assimilate with it. We also see these diagrams here. We see, you know, the people going into the house. And then this is the last one here. Assimilate and ascend. So his is kind of contradictory to what Hypnos is telling us. He's doing this the two paths. We can assimilate with this giant or destroy it. We don't really know who to trust or what to even really believe because it's, we're, 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 we get such little info. We get such little fucking info. But we gotta, we just gotta keep pressing forward. This is the first room that I made. This is great. Yeah. This is a great little office area. Little office area, and then this monkey's just totally fucking random. It's just almost for a joke. They it, say a monkey with infinite computers will one day rewrite Shakespeare. Personally, I'm a Marlowe man. Well. Good luck with the final test. Thank you, my learned monkey. And I guess, uh, I don't know. If you gotta explain it, it's a bad joke. I just hope people find that, think it's funny. Red door. So yeah, there's the red door. I guess I knew to go there, but if you didn't, like, this, this door's locked. We can't long. penetrate the... That one. We can't penetrate we can't that. can't penetrate so we And don't. I always bring condoms. <laughs> I always bring condoms. You have made it, my boy. I was worried you may never arrive. You proved yourself well. It seems the company's faith in you was founded. Who are you? Yes, it is natural to be curious. 
I am Gaia, or simply G. Yet not until you have completed the final module will you have your answers. However, I can tell you that you are very special. Why? You have a telepathic tie to the giant. Your results have proven that. To complete your destiny, please use the PC we've provided and assimilate. Hmm. Assimilate? The giant wishes to be free. You must, when the time comes, merge with it and not free it from its shackles. No. I know you'll do what's right. Please, use the PC we have provided. Farewell. Hmm. So I guess that's our biggest, like, kind of exposition lore dump for the game, is talking to G. And G kind of tells us that essentially, you know, maybe not everybody has this ability. So we've done these tests. They've shown we have this ability. So now it's, what are we going to do? And now here we are in front of the test again for our final one. And you awake before a house in the woods. It is not your house. The house beckons you inside. This is your final test. Think carefully. What do you do? Now, I'm going to destroy just because I really like the little jingle that plays when you destroy yeah. it. And this is actually what I find uh, is one of the creepier moments is like the, the little jingle that plays and the, how it thanks you for the arson. There's just something really like unsettling and creepy, I think. And we still don't that. quite understand. It's like, why would this want to be destroyed? It doesn't quite make sense. You know, make sense, but it, it, it doesn't feel right to do it. But. In some ways, it's, it seems like it wants us to do mm-hmm. it. And we'll show both endings, too, and kind of explain what we were thinking. But So this this produces an error, but the exercise is complete. The file has been updated. Back to work, back to work, back to work. And now uh, we're here. Yeah, now you, you made this level. This is super uh, X-Files. Super yeah. Underground yeah. laboratory. Underground lab kind of containment kind of thing. But now we've reached what seems to be the actual house, you know. Outside of the the game representation of it, mm-hmm. and we can see that this house is you know something's up. It's all contained in this lab. We have some monitoring it, yeah. and, mer- and monitors and stuff. And um, so essentially, you know, the the idea being that you know there's something inside this house, or the house itself is something extraterrestrial, and you have a connection to it. Some parties here want you to... It seems like the company itself, O'Curtis, wishes you to just merge with it. But the house is wishing to be freed. Mm-hmm. So now we can boot the PC and actually communicate with the sleeping giant. I sense your presence, young one. I have not had a visitor in some time. Are you ready for your final task? It would seem you're prepared. A talking house?! This human construction is but my prison, young one. I have awaited my savior for a long time. Are you my savior? Oh. You must destroy the house to free us. Leaving it to stand will only bring a worse destruction. All right, so this is our final choice. To be honest, it's actually, I think, the only choice that matters in the game. Pretty well. Um, it, it other than different getting ending. different dialogue. The difference, there's a few stuff. different dialogue options and stuff, but this is the only time it really branches when you get the ultimate choice to destroy the house or, or yeah. basically enter and merge with it. Yeah, so we'll show both endings here, but um, we'll destroy it first. And boom. Just as you reach Jeremy's abandoned car, the O'Curtis office explodes in the distance. You just hope he's okay. And never made it to that job interview. Word. Okay. So this is like kind of the perspective of somebody else. And he's basically found Jeremy's car. Jeremy maybe died in that explosion because he was in that O'Curtis building. Mm. Your player character. But let's say we didn't talk to Jeremy. Let's say we didn't talk to Jackie. And took the corpo background. So, you can still, you know, communicate with the house, all that kind of stuff. But if you basically decide, I'm not going to destroy this house. I'm going to keep things as they are. Well, at this point, um, I guess, you know, all the pieces have been revealed. 
that it's pretty much saying that there, that there's something this this entity this sleeping giant that that is communicating with you uh, lays dormant in the house and the only way that it can be free is if it's destroyed but the Curtis group the people that are testing you uh, want you to assimilate it so they don't want whatever is in there or out of there exactly um, and I think that also represents the fact that like it kind of gets a little trippy and weird but like we said the, the house in the game also represents the o Curtis building but then there's literally a house another house that mirrors it in the real world itself so I guess you gotta ask the question does destroying the house destroy the whole building is this house being destroyed at the end symbolic is the building being destroyed then symbolic like there's still a lot of it's still very ambigu ambiguous exactly it's also the way that the text based shit comes mm -hmm. into both the computer game and like the real thing it suggests that the whole thing is possibly a simulation well then we'll see right here is that if we leave leaving is effectively assimilating with it and that this is the other ending whatever it wants a lot okay Great work. You're going to make a great addition to the company, Mr. Head of Virtual Systems. Anywho, welcome to the family. Thanks. And there we go. And there we go. That's another ending. So I think, um, you know, we've, we've tried to make a bit of sense to it, too. And at, at the end of the day, uh, it is uh, also just a kooky kind of abstract Kooky abstract. Kind of up to your interpretation, too. And... Uh, it's kind of this this Saint Mildred world. We like to just kind of make these fun levels, and we got more coming. We got more coming. Yeah, we're we're working on the whole Saint Mildred collection. I know uh, that's kind of how you like to work, Luke. You like to kind of come up with the whole world, and then you got the ball rolling. You get the ball rolling because now we kind of have, now we can play. Now we got the world to play in. Yeah. So there's lots there, lots of lots of fun stuff, and I'm really looking forward to our next project. Um, yeah. Luke's shown me it. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. Got some cool stuff coming. Um, more lore. And yeah, just thank you for watching this video too. I know it's just kind of a silly little dream game and dreams, but I appreciate you uh, listening because uh, it's really fun for us and it's it's just fun to talk about. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of our weird ideas and shit. So thanks again. Thank you. All right, peace out, everyone. Take it easy. <laughs>